Hi guys, here I'm going to show you how to import additional columns when you go to refresh your queries in Excel and the source data has added additional columns. This tutorial specifically follows the coronavirus stats analysis in Excel tutorial that I did a few days ago because in that apparently when we go to import the data over here, you can see March 15th, and we refresh it, the new columns don't come in. And I never ran into this problem before because usually columns are set in stone and so it just updates the rows. But in this case, we wanted to update the rows and the columns. As well, we want it to reflect that in the pivot table that we're going to create. So here I'll show you two different ways to fix that. One's an easy way, one's a bit more difficult that requires some actual code. And so if you want to, you can go to teachexcel.com and download this file so you can just copy and paste that if you want to make sure that your pivot tables will update. Also, if you download this file and the pivot table has a bunch of lines on it, just click inside the pivot table, go to pivot table analyze and click the little red button right here to collapse the fields and it should look just like this. So let us go ahead and get started. Here we have our web query. I'm going to be using the web query in this example and let's go ahead and get our data connections up so we can see them. And the, so the first one imports from a CSV that I downloaded and I showed you how to do that in the tutorial. There were 450 rows and then I went to refresh this query. So click in the data table, table design, refresh, and it updates the rows. So now we have 462 today, but it does not update the columns. This is actually a pretty easy fix for this one. So what you can do is just hover over this query and go to edit or click in the table and if you don't see the query tab by the way just click away and then come back to the worksheet and the query tab should pop up so we can also go to query edit and from the power query editor which is this window what we can do then is go to advanced editor and I'm going to show you the simplest way to do this so right now your code might actually not look like this go to display options and check enable word wrap it might look like this by default, but it's a little bit more difficult to use. So enable word wrap. And what we're going to do is just to delete columns equals 58. It might be a different number depending on when you followed this tutorial and imported the data. But now go ahead and click done. Don't do anything else. And we can do, well, we can make sure that it works here. So we can go all the way to the right and you should see the new day's data. If you don't see it right there, just hit refresh preview and it should come in. When you're done, hit close and load. It'll automatically refresh this dude. And now we have the new columns. So everything seems great, good, fine and dandy. And if that's all you want, okie dokie, you're done. But the problem, let me show you, is that now when we have a pivot table, so I'm gonna create a pivot table from this data, Let's close this dude, get the country region in there, go down, we'll do March 15th. Okay, all is good. It's a sum of the days there because remember, remember for each country we have individual little states or regions. But now we want to add the other days. So in order to get the other days to appear here, we have to as well refresh this data. So pivot table, analyze, click refresh. You're going to see new ones pop in here. And you might have seen some new countries appear here on the left as well, or some new regions. Now let's go ahead and add the 18th. Okay. But nope, didn't work so well. It just added them kind of under the country, not exactly how we want it. Let's go down here. It's in the rows section, not where we want it. Let's pop it over here. We can see now it's a count on that day instead of a sum. So if we go to make it a sum, and I'm covering this quickly because I'm not trying to teach you how to use pivot tables here value field settings, change the count to a sum, hit OK, and we get a bunch of zeros. So it's not going to work. And this is where we get into the very annoying change that we have to make. So make sure that you download the workbook so you don't have to type in the next steps, but follow along and I'll show you what we need to do. Okay, I'm going to start here with a new workbook. This is an exact copy of where we left off just a couple days ago and we're going to go with the web query. I'm not going to show you how to do that here. And now we got to get the stupid little query tab back. So let's try that trick. Go away, come back. There we are. 
seems like the more they update Excel, the less it works. So now we're going to go back to the Power Query Editor. Okay. And make sure if you're using the workbook from a couple days ago that you're using the query that queries the data from the web so it will be updated. And what we're going to do here, let's set up the window, let's expand the query section. So now we have the queries we have in the middle here, what it will look like, and applied steps over here. Now what I'm going to do is to, and you could have done this in the last example where we deleted columns, but that's okay. Let's right click this and delete changed type one and right click changed type and delete that as well. It's going to give you a little warning. Don't worry about it. Now what we want to do is we're going to actually create a kind of custom function query that will do some magic with these dudes here and make it do what we want. That's a very easy way to explain what's going to happen. So please, if you know an easier way to do what I'm about to do, put it in the comments and let everybody know. Because this is ridiculous what we have to do to get this to work. So I'm hoping there's an easier way. All right. So we're on the Home tab in the Power Query Editor. We're going to go to New Source, Other Sources, Blank Query. Don't type in anything here. Go over here to the name and give it a custom name, a name that is not going to appear anywhere else. So I'm going to call this one transform uh, column type custom. I could probably make that a small f. Hit enter. OK. Over here in queries, you'll see a new dude, transfor transform column type custom. Okay, make sure you've clicked that, then go to Advanced Editor. And now we're going to hit Control A, delete all of this, and we are going to paste in a custom, I don't know what, custom code. This is called mCode. And essentially what this is going to do is what Excel should already be doing, which is just identify the data type of the new columns as they come in and assign them correctly so they can work in our pivot table. This is some crazy stuff that you have to do by hand. So like I said, if you know an easier way, tell me. So copy paste this dude in, hit done. Okay, don't do anything here. Don't worry about that. Then go over to your query that gets the data from the web. In our workbook, this is the second query. All right, so click that. Then go to advanced editor. Do a comma after this line. Hit enter, and we are going to type hashtag or pound sign, quotation marks. Now, changed type, close quote, equals. Now we're going to type the name of the function we just created, transform column type custom. I'm going to double click that. Then open parentheses. Now, another hashtag pound sign, quotation mark. Promoted headers, see it filling in there, so I'll hit tab to get it to go in. So promoted headers here, promoted headers here. That's the reference. Now let us go ahead and we're just going to copy this and paste it over this. That is all that you have to do. Up here you see the URL where we get the data from. And oops, almost forgot, remove the stupid columns right here. Bye bye columns. Remove one of the commas. Now we're good to go. <laughs> Hit done. OK. You should see now that we get new columns, but that's how it looked last time, but it still didn't work. So let us go ahead and do close and load this time. OK. We see our new things here. Yay, 462 rows. Let us go all the way to the right. All right, so far so good. 16th, 17th, and 18th are in. Now let us create our pivot table just like we did the last time when it didn't work. Okay, close the queries and connections. We don't need that. Country and region. Go down here to 315 at first. Okay, so far so good. Now let's hit refresh to get the new stuff in. Okay, fingers crossed. Bam. There we go. 
all of that work just to do that. It is ridiculous. There must be an easier way to do this. <laughs> Oddly enough, I never had to import a variable number of columns when using the Power Query Editor. And that's what they assume. You're just going to get new rows instead of new rows and new columns. So when you initially set up your import, everything in that little code window is hard coded for the columns as opposed to just being variable, which is ridiculous. So now we have a setup where we can go here, just click anywhere, go to table design, refresh, all is good, that is going to be refreshed. Then go to our pivot table, pivot table analyze, refresh, and everything should be good. Now you're still going to have to add the additional columns when they pop in there. I'm sure there's an easier way to do that, but uh, I'm done trying to make this uh, any more seamless than it is for this tutorial, or it's just going to get too, too long. So I'm sorry this is a very long version of this Excel quickie, but I felt it was important to show you how to make it easier to import the new data as it comes into Excel and use it in your pivot tables. Of course, if you don't want to go through all these steps, you could just re-import the data every day and not just refresh your queries. But uh, that's all for this tutorial, and I really hope that I've made it a little bit easier for you to get this data into Excel and analyze it.